Hello, my name is Hossai Garwal and I'm a solution consultant here with eCapital Advisors based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We are a platform partner with Workday Adaptive Planning. In today's short video, I will be sharing with you how you can use Workday Adaptive Planning to easily run real-time scenarios of your existing plans and forecasts in today's ever-changing world. So let's get started. I have already logged into Adaptive Planning and am presented with a variance report as my home page. Your home page can be set up to whatever you like to see upon your immediate login. On this variance report, we are comparing our locked original budget pass one to our current working budget. Let's assume that we have been asked to run a new scenario on the working budget with a volume and price increase, as well as some dates uh, of our new hires that we want to bring more forward in the year of 2022. With that, let's go behind the scenes and set us up with that new what-if scenario of our working budget. As an admin user, I have full security rights to set up as many versions as I need without any impact to the performance of your model. Work the adaptive planning is built using um, the elastic hypercube technology, which all it means is that it allows you to expand and collapse real time as you add any additional versions, scenarios, or even dimensionality. So it grows with you as you're making adjustments or changes within your business. Let's run through our exercise and set us up with that new uh, what if scenario. You have the ability to give it a short name, give it a description. If you ever end up in the uh, situation where you have 200 some versions, it will always be there for you to use uh, to help you stay organized as you're making adjustments to certain variables within certain scenarios. But then the access control box here, you can lock versions, lock and load it. You have all your users in the system. Everyone's done making their changes. You can lock them so no one else can come in here and make any more adjustments. You can also hide scenarios from other users. In the event you have a confidential version, perhaps like a merges or acquisition situation, you can absolutely spin up that scenario, run through the model and have it be fully hidden from other users. In the options box, just how far out into the future you want to go. So if you ever want to do your 10-year plans, five-year plans, three-year plans, it's all just a selection from a drop-down menu. Now in the view, new version option here, we're taking that carbon copy of that working budget. And upon save, we're gonna place it on the left-hand side, right underneath our working budget in our bottom up folder. There is a folder structure available for you that you can really use, customize, uh, add additional folders, help you stay neat and organized as you spin up those unlimited number of scenarios. We are done making that carbon copy of that working budget. Now let's go and take a deep dive into our planning piece within Workday Adaptive Planning. In my model, I have a custom built product revenue sheet where I'm doing my revenue planning. On our right hand side in the top section here is where you can select your different versions. So in real time, we set up that new what if scenario and it's immediately available for us to pivot to and use in our planning section. On this cube sheet in our top section is where you see you, uh, our dimensionality, such as our products by customer one. And we're also looking at this by our sales north regions, as well as, as a couple of attributes such as size and color. This is where our consultants here at eCapital Advisors will sit down with you during design session and understand how you manage your data and you organize your business to do your planning. So think of these dimensions as the dimensions that you would use today uh, in order to do your planning, that slicing and dicing of your data. On your left-hand side here, I have some sales details such as my volume, my price, perhaps some discount to get us to that net revenue, as well as some cost details and all the way down to our gross profit and margin, and perhaps some goals we wanna track as well at this intersection of our data. Now, ease of use, is very highly rated with uh, within work the adaptive planning. It is the adoption rate is very, very high, easy for users to come in here right away and use these individual sheets. Here right now in January of 2022, we're looking at 145 units specifically for product A1 at customer one for our volume. Now we can simply come in here and make an adjustment 
Uh, anytime you make an adjustment in Adaptive, it will just turn blue, kind of present itself to you before you save it and you commit to it. Now, in our original storyline here, we were asked to make that top side adjustments and round up our volume. FY 2022, we're at 1,980 for product A1. Let's assume we're going to be at 2,000. We can simply type that in into our FY full year year number here where the system will allow us to break it back proportionally using prior year's value evenly on a weighted basis, or even choose an assumption of um, your choosing. If you have a seasonality in your business or seasonality around specific SKUs, you can absolutely build that out behind the scenes and then use in your break back methods. Let's just use proportionally. You can see our FY22 now rounds up to 2000. It just spread back that difference across all of our months. Now let's save this change. We're happy with it. We made one change to a specific uh, product. Now imagine you are asked to make a top side adjustment across all of your hundreds of SKUs. A simple pivot or slice and dice on this specific sheet will allow you to make that with uh, really just one click of a button. We sliced and diced our data. Our volumes are now at the top and our SKUs are here in our rows. Looks like we're at 16,265. Let's round us up to 20,000. Again, it is going to break that difference back and we'll save our changes. We're done making our changes to volume across our hundreds of SKUs or thousands of SKUs. In my example here, I have about 15, but imagine in your world where you have lots of different SKUs or products. Uh, now let's tackle on row three for price. This time round, price here is in a gray cell with a little blue triangle in the bottom right corner. All that really means in adaptive is that it is coming from a different place, from a different sheet where we're holding that driver in this example. We can also see from the formula bar that it is coming from our assumptions sheet. So let's pivot over to that assumption sheet where we're holding the all of our different drivers, top right hand corner. Again, we're gonna to pivot to that what if scenario. On this driver sheet in the first top section here, I have my price per unit. There's my $96. Let's assume that price increase across all of our different SKUs. And we're gonna increase price uh, 20%. Upon save, our blue is gonna change again to black. And on this driver sheet, I have a handful of drivers I'm holding that I'm using in my detailed modeling. Price, material cost per unit, labor cost, overhead, and some different freight costs. So this will be your drivers that you're using today in your business and in your modeling. Quick pivot back to our detailed product revenue sheet. Upon refresh in real time, you will see the impact to net revenue on the sheet where we're picking up that new price of $115.20. It picked up that 20% increase and a trickle effect went into place where everything is recalculated down to your net revenue and aggregates up to your consolidated total P&L. Now let's take a quick pause here as we're gonna switch our focus to workforce planning. We are done with making our adjustments and changes to volume and price across all of our different products. Now, the second piece of the exercise that we were asked is to adjust those start dates. Let's pivot over and pull up our detailed workforce planning sheet. Now, this workforce planning data that you see here on my screen as an example will come from your payroll system or your HR system. Once we bring in that data, all these columns that you see in here, such as name, title, Residency for tax are fully customizable based on the data that you need to have in Adaptive to do your planning. Residency for tax, in my example, is a drop down menu. Based on where these employees are located, it drives the cost for your FICA, your FUDA, your Social Security to the PL based on those drivers that we have in the background um, on our driver sheets. Start dates, end dates, your hourly employees, health plan benefits here is another drop down where the cost for plan one, two, and three all have different costs based on the selection will get pushed to the p and um, Your pay raise percents, the dates, your commission planning, bonus planning, all can be done here on this workforce planning sheet. You also have the ability to allocate employees 
in the example of William Clark here, who was listed three times. Looks like he's covering our sales south and sales north region on a 40-60 split. So any revenue he's generating or any expenses he is generating will get pushed to the PL based on that 40-60 split uh, that we have selected here for him. So let's switch our focus to those new hires, rows eight, nine, and 10. Here are my new hires. And let's take a look at the start date. Looks like um, Q1 and Q2 here, we're gonna bring these start dates more forward. We want everyone to be ready to go um, as an account executive early on in the year. So with just a simple switch on the dates, again, you'll see the blue fonted data. We are done making the changes. We're going to change the dates on those three new hires. We want them to start sooner so we can start generating revenue and ramping up these three new account executives a lot sooner than originally planned in that working budget. Uh, we're done with our scenario. Let's go ahead and take a look at that variance report we started out with at the very beginning and take a look at the impact to our financial statements. So here's the variance report in our top blue ribbon where we have our X, Y, and Z. So now looking at that working budget and taking a look at that what if, we have our two variance columns here for our dollars per cent and an impact column across your income statement your balance sheet and your cash flow all on one page, one view. We also have some financial metrics. We can easily bring in some operational metrics in here as well. That can be fully customized on a report like this. So if you scroll up to the top here, we can now start analyzing. If we wanna move forward with those decisions of increasing price or volume or whatever that scenario may be that you're considering today in your, in your business. So as this concludes my video, I hope you enjoyed seeing all your possibilities with work to adaptive planning to help you streamline your processes today to really achieve better and quicker insights into your business and be able to make those critical decisions in real time. I look forward to seeing you again in future videos. If you would like to have a tailored demo for your business, please contact us here at eCapital Advisors. Thank you and see you again next time.